every thought creates an action that will create a consequence. There are a lot of things that are beyond our control, but what you do have control over is how you react to whatever happens in your life. I certainly consider myself to be a blessed person, but you know what the thing is, people don't even get this. The chances of coming out of Mississippi in 1954, let's paint that picture, will you? Mississippi, in the time I was born, was the most racist state in the United States. You don't want to be caught after dark if you're a black person in Mississippi. It had absolutely no regard for your humanity. Didn't even think you were human. The fact that I could be born at that time and now do what I do, am who I am, live where I live, is the most extraordinary story I, I, can, I can ever imagine. I don't know anything more extraordinary. Who I am was defined for me at a very early age. When I was four years old, I remember watching my grandmother boiling clothes. I was standing on the back porch, looking through the screen. And my grandmother was hanging clothes from the line. She had an apron around her waist and inside the waist pocket were clothespins. We had no running water or electricity. So in order to wash your clothes, you had to wash them. And my grandmother did in a big boiling pot. She would boil them to boil the clothes clean. And as she would hang the clothes on the line and take the clothes pins out of her pocket and then put a couple in her mouth to hold, she turned to me and said, Obergale, talking through the clothes pins in her mouth, Obergale, my middle name, you better watch me now. Because one day you're going to have to learn how to do this for yourself. And a voice inside me, a feeling, uh, I think of it now as a voice because it was so strong, said, no, Grandmama, I won't. And I felt in that moment watching her that this will not be my life. My grandmother's dream for me, as was all of my relatives who were my caretakers, their dream for me was that I would be like them. My grandmother was a maid, my mother was a maid, all of my aunts were maids, and so they thought that that's what I would be. And my grandmother used to work for a family, a white family, and in taking care of their children and nurturing that family, she thought that they were good white folks. And she used to say to me, I hope you can grow up and get yourself some good white folks. In those days, being good simply meant you don't call me the N-word, you give me some level of respect, I still have to go to the back door, and I'm still treated as a second-class citizen, but I'm not degraded personally by you. So she wanted me to grow up to have some good white folks, and I often think that I wish she had seen that I did grow up to get a lot of good white folks working for me. She would not have believed it. The life that I lived, my grandmother would not have imagined possible for, for me. There is a flow. There's an energy field and a flow. That is also happening with us as human beings. We just haven't figured out what that is yet or how to channel it. But that is definitely going on. There's an energy field. There's an energy flow that I strongly feel in my own life and I know lots of other people who do you're either in flow or out of it and if you're in flow it's like this it's like this all the time it's like this it's like flowing with the stream and the flow is in direct proportion to the center of yourself where God abides where universal energy abides, where the divine within you abides. How far you are from the center, from the divineness of yourself, from your connection to source energy, 
that which created you is how out of sync you are with your life, regardless of what you call it. When you can align with that, nobody can touch you. Gary Zukov calls that authentic power. In his book, Seed of the Soul, he says, when your personality comes to serve the energy of your soul, that is authentic power. And that's the only real power there is because you're going to lose everything else. I don't care how beautiful you are. One day, your breasts are going to sag and your eyes are going to bag and you're not going to be as beautiful. And it doesn't matter how much Botox and how many times you get yourself pulled up and how many hairdos and how many makeovers or what you do, you know, that doesn't last. It's just like the most beautiful flowering tree. Everything passes and it's time. It doesn't matter how much money you have, how much power you have, how high you sit on the Forbes list, how many times you make the most influential lists. All of that changes. All of that changes. But what is real, what is lasting, is who you are and what you were meant to bring. What is the gift you were meant to give? And nobody can take that away from you.